listening to Good Morning Gwinnett, a division of Noise Media Network, hosted by Audrey Bell Kearney, sharing stories about people and places around beautiful Gwinnett County and beyond. Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Southern Living at its best. Good morning to all my Gwinnettians out there in Gwinnett land and all of you around the world listening to the sound of my voice. It's a beautiful day here in Gwinnett County, 41 degrees going up to a high of 54. <sighs> yeah, so happy to be back with you guys this morning. Yesterday was pretty tough, y'all. Um, you know, for those of you who didn't hear the show yesterday, I lost my mom yesterday morning. And um, it was a it was a rough, rough, that was the longest day of my life, y'all. And when I tell y'all, it was just, it seemed like it was like never ending. You know, you, you when you kind of wish the day away, I kind of, I just wanted to go to sleep last night and sleep. And when last night came, that is exactly what I did. I went to sleep and I woke up feeling a lot better. And it's so funny because <clears throat> when you're so close to somebody and my mom and I, so my mom, my mom has had eight brothers and it's eight of them. So they grew up in a very close quarters in Albany, Georgia. Um, they lived in, I don't know, what you, I don't know what you call it, one of the little old-fashioned houses from the 1900s, you know. So when you walk up on the front porch, the, the, the house was completely wooden, had a tin roof on the top. And when you walk up on the front porch, if you walk through the front door, and on the left side, my great-grandmother lived. On the right side, my grandmother lived. Now, here's here's the thing about this little house, right? It would be, it'll be called a duplex or a townhouse. In, in modern times because it was a duplex but it was very very small so it was only three rooms on each side of the house so there was a living room when you first walk in the door there was a middle room and then there was a kitchen and so my everybody had a bedroom they had a, a bed in the, in the living room because that's how it was my great-grandmother had a bed and a couch in the living room my great my grandmother had a bed and a couch in her living room um in the middle room on my grandmother's side now remember it was eight of them so they had this, some people had, I remember there was a big bed when you walk through, it's like a little, little walk where you walk through, through the walkway on my grandmother's side. There was a big bed right there and then there were two twin beds and then there was a bathroom in the kitchen. And on my great grandmother's side, her bedroom was, her, her window, her chair was against the, right by the door against the window and then her bed was on the other side of the room. I see this vividly y'all because I spent a lot of time with my grandmother, my great grandmother and her window, her bed was against the window. And so you would walk through the little hallway. And then when you walk through the little hallway, there was a, both of them had fireplaces. I think this is why I love fireplaces. Both of the uh, places had fireplaces. And when you walk in the back of my grandmother's house, the big bed was facing you directly when you walk through that little hallway. And on the right side was a twin bed. And then, then after that was a kitchen. And so my, that's how they grew up. They grew up tight like that. So it, for us to all live in this house together was the norm for my mother and my uncle because that's how they grew up. And so, um, and I'm telling y'all that story for a reason, but anyway, um, and I forgot the reason for telling y'all that, but anyway, my house is always full of people and, oh, it's the little things that I would, you know, that kind of messes you up. Like, like this morning, um, my mother would have been the first one to say one knock one cause she had got so into politics with the election and I smile as I say it because she was so into it. Like she watched CNN, she became a CNN fanatic. And so I could see right now, I would have woke up this morning and go to her room before I do the show. And she'd be like, you know, why not one? That's what she would have said because she was so in And she gets up early every morning. And so she would have gotten up this morning and she would have been excited because one I had one. She made sure that I cast her ballot for her. Um, and she kept saying, did you fill out my ballot? Did you fill out my ballot? Did you fill out my ballot? So I filled her ballot out. And we cast a ballot, so she would have been, uh, yeah. But but I said all that to say, those are the little things that kind of mess you up a little bit. And so this morning when I woke up and morning I had one, the first person popped in my mind was her because she would have been so excited this morning that he had one. But anyway, I'm feeling uh, much better today, and I know this is a process that I'm going to have to go through. I know that already, but I, what I realize is that as long as I keep busy, it kind of takes my mind off of it, you know. It takes my mind off the fact that she's not here with me. And, you know, and yesterday was so many phone calls and text messages. And, oh, my God, I was just exhausted. And But I feel better today. You know, I woke up feeling better. And I woke up just realizing I got to I gotta do what I got to do. And, you know, my, my brother sends out a really good message. And my daughter sends out a really good message. And 
talked about how the family just got to stay together. But our family has always stayed together. And now, so, and she was like the glue. Like, she was the glue to the family. Like, she was the one that, I told y'all, she called everybody every day. She called her brothers two or three times a day. Her her best friend, Lord, her best friend just, she called me this morning. She just broke down all over again. She's like, she's been my best friend for so long. Her name is Norma, and Norma is Jamaican. And so, when Norma and her, and they don't talk about a good two minutes every day, though. Every day for about two minutes. Ed, Ed, how you doing, Ed? And so, Norma started talking. Nobody really understands what Norma's saying but my mother. We were like, what did Norma just say? She was like, I know. Can't nobody understand Norma but me. And um, so I know, I know my, I know Norma is broken, but we all are. But you know, we're gonna get through this. And I think I take solace in knowing that she is not in any pain. You know, um, the more we talked about, it, the more we all realized that she was always in a lot of pain. Um, every day, every more every day she woke up, she was in pain. And so for me, that makes me smile to just think about her not being in pain, because I know. You know, she would say that every single day I'm in pain. My my knee hurt, my back hurt, my leg hurt. You know, she was when she had when she had breast cancer. I think the chemo and the and the, and the radiation did something to like her bones and stuff. And um, like she was, I, I I would grease her her legs and stuff. And if I mashed a little too, I'm talking about barely touching her. She was like, "Oh, you hurt me," and I'm like, "Mom, I'm barely touching you." So she was in pain a lot. So. I, you know, as much as I love her and I'm, I'm, and I miss her already, I know she's not in any pain. So I'm just going to keep holding on to that, that she is good. And she's up there with my grandmother and my great grandmother, my uncle Bubba and Betty and my dad and the rest of my family. Um, cause I'm her and my cousin Betty, they were really, they were like sisters. So when we lost Betty in 2018, that, that tore us up, you know, and two years later, my mom is gone, but they're all together. And Betty was a sweetheart too. Like Betty was so sweet. She'd give anything to anybody. She took care of when my mother, when my brother and I were little and my mother had to go to work, Betty was the one that took care of us. You know, when we were in Albany, she took care of us. She made sure my hair was done, you know, and, and I was dressed and looking cute all the time. That's what she did. That's what she did. So she took care of us. And, um, you know, but now they're together and my aunt Fanny, oh, my aunt Fanny was a mess, y'all. Her and my mother shared the same birthday. And so I know they all up in heaven having a ball because aunt Fanny was a mess. Let me tell y'all, she was a, her husband and I'm, I'm, I'm going to get on with my story, but I got to tell y'all this because my aunt Fanny was a mess. My mother was just like her though. They were, they were the same people and they shared the same birthday. That's Betty's mom. And I know y'all don't know these people like, who is she talking about? But I got to tell y'all this story. My my aunt was married to her husband for a long time, and I remember her her taking his check to the bank, and I said to her, "Ain't he? He didn't. We call him Mr. Saul. Mr. Saul didn't sign the check." She said, "Them people at the bank don't know Saul's signature. I've been signing that check forever." That junk was funny. To this day, my husband my husband talks about that because he's like, "They don't know my signature at the bank." Um, but my aunt never let that man sign his check. She signed that check for him and she told me they don't know his signature. I was like, Oh my God. But anyway, let me get on with the day. Y'all I know I, I, you know, these things make me smile and I need to smile right now. You know, I need to smile and my family is hilarious and the ones that have gone on, they were the best people and funny. So, um, I know they're in heaven right now rejoicing and I hope y'all shining some blessings down on us down here. Cause we need them. This freaking coronavirus is still floating around, making wreaking havoc on people's lives. But anyway, today is National Shortbread Day. Shortbread. I don't even know what is shortbread. Like, what is that? And it's also National Bean Day. So get you some shortbread and some beans, and you got a full meal. You got a full blown meal. So if you like beans and shortbread, enjoy. Now for me, it's National Technology Day. I like technology. I like technology. All right. Let's go ahead. Listen, let me tell y'all something. Um, I don't like beans. Not really. I don't like beans. I don't like, um, uh, I don't know what shortbread is, but I have lost so much weight, y'all, behind this freaking coronavirus. I lost a lot of weight. Like, I've lost about 16 pounds. My brother's stomach is flat as it want to be. Like we have, all, my husband has lost about 15 pounds. My, my stepdaughter has lost about 20. Listen, this thing is kicking our tails. It is kicking our butts, but we are getting through it. We are. 
All right, let's go ahead and do your hard skills brought to you by Noted Astrology, Micah Thyssen. But before I do that, I want to get a ha happy birthday to my good friend, Sonia Edwards, all the way in New Jersey. Happy birthday, girl. It's your birthday. Enjoy your day, sister. Enjoy your day. She called me yesterday, y'all. She, um, these, these are my friends since I was a kid. And, um, everybody knew my mother as Mama Bell. And everybody was just, oh, man, the love, like... When you think about one person, how many person that one person touched, people called me, they were like crying on Facebook, and I was like, I can't even get on Facebook right now. I can't, I, I just can't stand to see it right now. And people were, well, people that I hadn't talked to in 20 years reached out and was like, Orge, I didn't even know, I didn't even know, you know, you know, a lot of my friends call me Orge. Orge, I didn't even know, man. It was, my mother touched so many people's lives, and it, and it showed, like, the love that we have gotten, like, it is just ongoing out. My husband, his friends, oh my God, it's just it's just been people. She touched off, she touched a lot of lives. And Sonia was one of those people and she's like, Man, Mama Bell, she's like, I'm so hurt, you know, and but anyway, so she had COVID. So she had COVID too. Her and my, her and my friends, they all the whole family just like us had COVID. Um, but thank God they've all recovered. Thank God for that. So Sonia, enjoy your birthday, babe. Love you to life. All right, we're going to kick it off like we always do, and that is with Aries. Build on friendship rather than starting out an intimate encounter. Don't shy away from potential mates that will want to introduce you to. They want to introduce you to. You may be, you may have difficulties with someone who lives with you. All right, listen, we ain't having no difficulties in this house today, so that's, we're not doing that. Build on your friendships. Listen, Aries, if you single, build on the friendships. A good relationship starts out as a, as a good friendship. You want to be able to talk to that person, laugh at that person, trust me, and cry with that person. You know what I'm saying? Like, I thank God for my husband because he has been my rock through this time. Do you hear me? I, I hate to see him go back to work, tell you the truth. But I know you got to go. But I really like, man, I'm so glad you was here with me. This has been rough, y'all. Taurus, travel will be the most enticing Consider a cruise. <laughs> yeah, I don't know about that one, y'all. They jump. They will jump at the chance to do something without you if it sounds more fun. If you need to lie back and enjoy uh, and get a little rest. Yeah, lie back and get you some rest. Now, I don't know about that cruise. I ain't even trying to listen. I'm telling y'all right now, like, God is bringing us through. He is. He is healing us all. And when I tell you, I don't think I'm going on no cruise where I'm going to be locked up on a ship with nobody for, for a long time. I just don't see that happen. Now, I'm going to take a trip. It won't be a cruise, though. It's not going to happen. And I loved, I went on a cruise for the first time in, in, what, 19? It was amazing. And I'm like, yeah, I got to go again. And then all this stuff happened. Won't be for a minute. Gemini, don't give in too quickly. Deal with in-laws today. You have original ideas for ways to make extra money. Every time I see the, the Gemini, I'm always going to think about my mom because she was a Gemini. But anyway, don't give in too quickly. Deal with your in-laws. Be nice, though. Be nice to your in-laws. Deal with them, but be nice. All right? They're your in-laws. Cancer. If you're willing to cut loose, you will find yourself in the midst of an exciting encounter. Okay, Cancer. You will tend to overeat today. <laughs> Don't let your mate stop you from attending an event that could be most important. Listen, don't overeat either. Like, just, listen, one of the things we got to do, I, and I'm not talking because this is like the first of the year, is stay healthy. And that means eating right. I got to tell y'all, because we haven't been able to taste crap, that has, like, I'm, I'm using that to my benefit. Like, okay, I haven't been able to taste a thing. I've been eating oranges and apples and pomegranates, not apples, oranges and and, 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 and and bananas and pomegranates. Oh, my God, the pomegranate was so good. It was I, All I could taste was the sugar. I couldn't make out the taste, but I could taste the sugar, and it was delicious. I got one left. Um, but eat healthy. Because here's one of the things I'm learning. I'm learning that. I'm learning that. My baby just walked in, y'all. Say good morning. Say good morning. Good morning. Y'all heard it? You said good morning. Okay, they don't understand what you're saying. They don't understand what you're saying. Bye-bye. So, you know, one of the things we've learned with this whole thing is that you have to protect yourself and stay healthy. And being healthy means eating right and exercising. So that's what we're, that's what we're on, on point to do right now. So just take care of yourself. Stay healthy and take care of yourself. All right, Leo. 
hide your cards and learn how to say no. Ooh, that's the most powerful two letter word in our in our in our in our system. You tell me two letter word that's so powerful. No, yes, don't let others make you feel guilty or insecure. Don't do it, Leo. You want to take that extra special care um, of your luggage today if you're traveling. Listen, just say no. I don't care what nobody said. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. This is your life. And it's your responsibility to be happy. All right? Virgo, a passionate encounter with, mate, <clears throat> with your mate will help you alleviate the pent-up energy. You'll find love and you'll get into a tip-top shape at the same time. Don't overspend on entertainment or, or on children or make poor investments. Yeah, we tend to overspend on our kids. I know. I know. that It's just, it's just what we do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But listen, check this out, Virgo. You're going to find love and get in shape at the same time. Does that mean you have to go to the gym? I'm not exactly sure. I'm not telling you to go to the gym. I'm just saying if you're out there exercising, chances are you're going to find your new year, new love while you're getting in tip-top shape. And that's good. Y'all can exercise together. Get in shape together. All right, listen, we're going to a song. I'll be right back after the song to give you more of the horoscopes brought to you by Nolan Strong and Micah Thyssen. You're listening to the Good Morning Gwinnett Show. Stay tuned. I am stuck in the middle. Yeah, I'm stuck in between. I am stuck in the position. I'm just a machine. So you're stuck in the middle, huh? I guess we're stuck in between Life is a riddle, yeah And I don't know what it means, no This is what it feels like But you're not alone Cause I'm just like you This is your girl giving you the daily horoscopes brought to you by Noted Astrologer Micah Thyssen. We're going to pick it up with Libra. 
Try not to get involved in other people's problems. You would need to do a lot of research if you wish to get to the bottom of things. You can learn from those who have had similar experiences. All right, listen, do your research. Get to the bottom of things first. Don't jump to conclusions and don't listen to what everybody say. You do your research because there's always two sides to the story, to every story, and then there's a truth. So it's really three sides. Scorpio. Real estate investment could be prosperous. You should consider getting a, your whole family involved in a project at home. Changes in your self-image will be to your benefit as long as you don't overpay. Yeah, changes to your self-image. Yeah, don't overpay though. You know, a change could be you just getting a facial. You know what I mean? Get you a massage or something. You know, but don't overpay. It's because a lot of that stuff is overrated. So don't overpay. Sagittarius. Don't let your mate force you into making a decision that you aren't ready to make. You may be in an extremely passionate mood today. Okay, Sag, you got some passion in your step today. Yes, don't let your mate force you to know. If you don't want to do it, don't do, just say no. Just say no. Capricorn, opportunities for, for romance may develop through dealing with groups that have a purpose. Property investments, insurance, tax rebates, or inheritance should bring you financial gains. This is a great day to mingle with people you would like to impress. All right, so you got some good stuff coming, some property investments, some insurance, a tax rebate. Listen, listen, y'all probably got $2,000 coming soon. Yes, you probably do. You got an inheritance, some good stuff coming. We're going to talk about that on the other side. Aquarius, visitors may be likely to drop by. You're not uh, your usual self today. You can enhance your reputation by making contributions to worthwhile causes. Anytime you do something to give back, it makes you feel good. So Aquarius, if you're not feeling that great and you're not your usual self, do something that's nice for somebody. You'll feel a lot better. I know. I do it all the time. It makes me feel good. And not least, but last but not least, my fellow fish Pisces, romance will develop through work-related activities. Take a close look at documents before signing on the dotted line. Oh, Problem with in-laws or relatives may be more damaging than you realize. Listen here, uh, uh, fish. Take a close look at them documents. Y'all know, y'all know. I say this all the time. If you're not sure what you're signing, don't sign it. Consult with the professional to help you read between the lines and read on the dotted line. You know what I'm saying? Don't sign away your life and the kids and the dog. If you don't understand something, just ask somebody. You know, sometimes people don't even want to spend the money to, to get the consultation so they can get the right information to save them even more money down the line. They won't do it. They'll be like, I'm just going to read it. And then they mess up. Then they got to go back and pay extra money because they messed up. <clears throat> all right, so listen, that's all the horoscopes I got for today. I'll be back again tomorrow, God willing, at 10 o'clock to bring you more of the horoscopes. Listen, I forgot to tell y'all, it's Wednesday. It's hump day. Lord have mercy, we all made it to the middle. Yes, you know, I'm so grateful to be here with you guys today. Ooh, it's hump day. You've made it to the middle. Tomorrow is my my Friday, and um, and then I'll be off. But I'll be back again tomorrow to talk to you more about what's going on in around Gwinnett County. Now, let's get on to some news, y'all. Listen here. The, the election was yesterday, and I called myself trying to watch it, but I was so exhausted. And, um, and I haven't been watching a lot of television anyway because I just felt like, man, I don't want to see anything about the freaking coronavirus. My brother texted me this morning. He's like, I hate the coronavirus. Like, me too. You know, so and y'all all know why. And I'm going to stop. I'm, I know I'm talking about it a lot, but it's still very fresh in my life right now. And for so many different reasons. But the main ones was my mom. So I know, I know I got to talk about it. I probably need to go to therapy and all that good stuff. But this is my therapy. Can't you see how much better I sound today? I feel much better. Like yesterday was a long, hard day. Today I feel a lot better. And I'm so glad the election was yesterday and over and over. I'm like, oof. Ooh, let's move forward. Let's move forward. So anyway, that being said, Reverend Raphael Warnock is the first black senator in the state of Georgia. Did y'all hear what I just said? Raphael, Reverend Raphael Warnock is the first black senator in the state of Georgia. First ever. Can you imagine that? The first ever in the whole state. That is, that is unbelievable. We had so many firsts in this, 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 this election here. We had our first uh, African-American commissioner. We had our first black sheriff in Gwinnett County. We had our first uh, black woman uh, um, uh, a district attorney. There were so many firsts. It's just unbelievable. Like, first, 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 
and you would think that after all these years that by now that should have been one. Well, maybe the time wasn't to now. So, because that's when it is. And so, congratulations to Reverend Warnock uh, for winning the election last night over Kelly Loeffler. I mean, she had some she had some scandalous ass running, y'all. I'm talking about, he. she had one with his ex-wife. I was like, where the heck she get that? They were digging for gold. Do you hear me? They were digging up stuff. I know that man was like, where in the world did they get that video from? She was saying something about he was mean. I was like, what the heck? You know, at the end of the day, what this is what I always say. People are running for public service offices, right? They are people just like anybody else. We make, they make mistakes. They bleed red blood just like anybody else, right? And so I don't even, listen, we didn't look all, all the crap that went on with the, with the president. I'm like, man, whatever, who cares? You know, um, cause so much stuff came out in his election. It was 23 people talking about they were raped. Come on, man. I was like, really? Like that don't matter. Anyway, congratulations, Raphael Ronak. He is going to be our, our senator for the state of Georgia. And John Ossoff is trying to trying to pull it out, and it looked like it's going to happen. Now, what does that mean for you and I? That means that President Biden can get in there and do his job, and he ain't got to worry about the freaking Republican Senate group trying to fight him along the way and block everything and make a mess of everything. They have made they have been a party that is that party. Not, not everybody. I'm not saying everybody. But the people in power, they up there right now in Washington doing something stupid, trying to block something. Like, come on, man. What is wrong with them? Like, I, I just kind of, I say to myself, okay, so is it me or is it just not, it's not, it, does it not make sense that the election was won, it's over, why are you still trying to fight and block stuff? Like, what is wrong with you people? You know, and that and that that blows my. I would love to. I would love to sit in their meeting to see like why they have this. Because you would think they were intelligent people, right? And so in my mind, I'm thinking they have a game plan. They trying to do something. They trying to do because they can't be that stupid. I'm just saying. I just they can't. It's got to be some kind of big plan that we don't know about. And I'm sure we don't. To make them keep going on and on and on and on and on and on and on about this election that's been won already. Like, it is unbelievable. But anyway, John Ossoff is trying to pull it off. It looks like he just may do it. And if he does that, that means that politics, as we have seen over the last four years, is out the window. And we hopefully we're going to see some better politics and some better help for all the people who are suffering. And most of all, like right now, oh, my gosh, get this freaking coronavirus under control. Like, we don't need anybody standing in the way of that. We need every task force every vaccine, every parking lot set up to, to distribute vaccines, whatever, we need to get it out to the people. Now they're talking about it's a new strain that's out, and it's already here in Georgia. I'm like, oh, Lord. Like, I ain't going to want to go out the house. I'm going to probably stay in the house. I'm probably going to run out, mask up. I might wear the, 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 um, that plastic mask and go over top of the mask. I'm telling y'all, this thing, I was shook when my uncle passed away, so y'all know how I feel now. Worse. But this too shall pass, and we'll get through it. We'll get through it. So, uh, Raphael has won. We got to see if John Ossoff going to pull it off um, because he, he's trying. So, speaking of the coronavirus, um, right now they're saying that the Gwinnett School System, uh, Gwinnett School's employees could soon get a, a survey to see whether or not they want to get the vaccine. And I think this is a good thing that they're going to give it to the teachers first because remember, y'all, that's how this whole thing got started at my house. The baby went to the daycare and had those people had the vaccine, that probably wouldn't happen. But, you know, that's God's plan and we can't change that. But the teachers in Gwinnett County may have may soon have the opportunity as soon as the end of this month to get the vaccine. But right now they want to do a survey to see who actually want to get the vaccine. Like I've heard people say, I'm going to get it, but I ain't taking Pfizer's. Like people, people, you know what I'm saying? Because they feel like Pfizer, there's too much handling. Like you got to be so careful and one thing out of whack with Pfizer, you you may have a vaccine that's no good and you don't even know. And so you walking around thinking you're good and the vaccine is no good. So people, people, some you know, I had first time, I ain't taking it. Yeah, I'm taking it. I ain't even gonna lie to y'all. I'm taking it. Yep, I don't know about Pfizer's. I might take Moderna's, but I'm taking it. So um, right now, um, the educators um, are part of phase, uh, phase 1B vaccine distribu distribution that Brian Governor Kemp um, 
Governor Brian Kemp <laughs> announced last month. So they're saying that Gwinnett educators could begin receiving the vaccine by the end of this month. But they want to know who actually want to take it because some people are saying they're not going to take it. You know, I can't imagine right now because I'm living through this whole craziness. I can't imagine not taking it. I can't imagine anybody not wanting to take it. Um, because here's the thing, the virus is not going anywhere. And as safe as we thought we were, it we weren't uh, safe enough. And so if that means an extra layer of protection for my family and we all need to take the vaccine, then that's what we're going to do. So, we, you know, I think it's good because the people are in the school with the kids and kids are going to go back to school this year. Um, and they, you know, they need to be able to be protected. You know, and because they go home and they take stuff home to their parents and grandparents and, you know, you can have a tragedy in your family like I did. So I don't want to see that happen. So I think that's a good thing. And I, you know, I'm sure we're going to get more information about this and how people feel about taking it and everything. But if I was a teacher and I had to go into the classroom, yeah, I'd be definitely trying to get on that. It's for real. All right, I'm going to a song. I'll be right back after this song to give you more of what's going on in and around Gwinnett County. Stay tuned. <laughs> So listen, guys, um, there's a new brewery coming to Peace Street Corners. Yep. You know, there's a there's a lot of that going on around now, right now. You know, I told y'all earlier this year, I almost started a um, 
I almost started a, a brewery. Like I had got a, an investor who was trying to figure out where to put his money because he came into a windfall. And the first thing I thought about was doing a brewery. He loved the idea. I had scouted out the location, got everything ready, about to get the grease traps done and all this kind of stuff. And I kept thinking, and, and I was thinking, do I really want to do that? You know, and because it, it's such a crazy time right now. Like people are not being shut in because of the whole Corona thing. And so my daughter was like, yeah, do you really want... So she came to me after I was thinking it to myself. She said, do you really want to do that? And I was thinking to myself, you know, I was asking myself the very same question. So I went back to the investor and I said, hey, listen, I can't even take your money right now and because I don't know how this thing is going to play out. Like, I don't know what's going to happen with the whole coronavirus. And, I, you know, at that time, business was shutting down left and right. And this was like around, I think around June, July, around July, I think it was. And, um... You know, I was I was feeling hopeful, but then I was like, yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't think I could do that. But anyway, you know, there are other people who have said, you know what, we can still do it. So Peachtree Corners is going to be getting a new brewery. It's called um, Kettle Rock Brewing. Yep, it's going to be located at 6025 Peachtree Parkway. That was a space formerly occupied by Nemo's uh, Lounging uh, Tavern and Grill. So it's going to be there. So it's going to be um, it's set to open early in 2021. So it's going to be probably a really nice location. It's going to have a tap room. State of the art brew house. Um, it's going to be 5,000 square feet. So, you know, prayerfully we can get the vaccine and we can get back to living again. And, and do I have never gone, well, I've been to a brewery, but I don't really, I don't drink beer. I've never drank beer. I drank it like one time when I was in high school. It was disgusting. But I think I told you, I interviewed John Reynolds, who is, um, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, he owns the brewery here in Gwinnett County and, and, the, and the, the name escapes me right now, but he told me, Audrey, there's a beer out there with your name on it. And I was like, you think so? So I'm looking forward to being able to just go hang out. And, you know, um, one of the things about um, I've heard is that it's just a good gathering place, you know. And so um, this is a, this is going to be a, you know, another addition to, to Gwinnett County for us. People can have a, a place to hang out and enjoy themselves and get together. Kettle Rock won the Gwinnett Amazing Entrepreneur Contest pre-venture category in 2019. So they've been working on this for a minute, y'all. So they're going to have a master brewer on place. It's going to be cool. I'm sure it's going to be cool. I'm sure it's going to be really, really nice. South Gwinnett head coach, Mr. Steve Davenport, has decided to resign as a head coach for head football coach for South Gwinnett for personal reasons. Um, he said, you know, I guess he needs to go on and do some things, but he has helped over 40 students get scholarship programs, and that's important. You know, um, my brother's a football coach, and so, of course, I had to tell him. So Because, you know, he just moved here. And um, I had to tell him, hey, hey, South Gwinnett coach just, just resigned. And my brother was like, oh, really? So, um, you know, he's looking to coach football again. But that's one of the things about being a coach. When you are a coach for those boys, you are like a father, a big brother, an uncle. You know, you're a counselor. You know, you're, you're a guardian for a lot of them. And so um, being able to help them get a, a full scholarship ride to school, not only just to play football, but to get a good education. I think that's amazing. My nephew got a four year ride when he went to college. He had 26 offers. He had 26 offers when he was coming out of high school to go to college. So he, he went to school for his master's and his bachelor's degree without having to come out of pocket with a dime. So the fact that uh, Coach Davenport has been able to help 40 young men get scholarships to move on through the, um, through life and become great community leaders, I think that's a great thing for him. And I'm sure he's going to be missed at, at South Gwinnett High School. But there could be a, another coach coming that's just as good. You know, him, his last name may be Bell. You know, I'm just saying. You never know. You never know. All right, so listen, guys. I'm still kind of, if you have, if you can't tell, I'm still a little winded. Because um, I still have, well, I don't know if I still have it. I'm going to test again in a little while. But it's still kind of, it's kind of hard to still breathe a little bit. And I don't know if that's because I just haven't been able to just be my normal self and move around a lot. But that whole chest thing, like breathing, shortness of breath, that's that's real. That's real, y'all. So I still have a little bit of difficulty um, breathing a little bit. So I'm right now, I'm feeling so tired after seeing talking to y'all. And this is what I do every day. But because I because of this whole corona thing, I feel like I've been running. Like and I'm just sitting in this chair talking to you. But I'm gonna go to my last song and then I'm gonna come back and close it out so I can get some more rest. And um, um stay tuned. <laughs>
I told you my theme for this year is gratitude. And so here's go, here goes my quote for the day. There's always more to give thanks for. Listen, if you woke up this morning and you can breathe and you can walk and you can talk, there's something to give thanks for. If you woke up this morning and your family woke up with you, something to give thanks for. Even if you woke up this morning and somebody you love did not wake up suffering this morning, that's something to give thanks for. And I'm thankful. So... Listen, thank you so much for the love, the outpouring love that I received from all of you. I really appreciate you and love your life for that. And thank you for uplifting my family in prayer. And I thank you for just being here and listening to the show. If you missed any episode of the show, be sure to go to goodmorninggwinnett.com to listen to past episodes there. Also, follow me on Facebook at Good Morning Gwinnett. Follow me on Twitter at GM Gwinnett. And follow me on Instagram at Good Morning Gwinnett. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. God willing. Listen, take care. Keep your mask on. Keep the mask on. Wash your hands. Stay six feet apart. I'm telling y'all, it works. When it doesn't work, you you suffer. And you don't want to suffer, right? You don't want to suffer. It's always more to give thanks for. Give thanks today and thank, thank somebody for just saying, you know what? Hey, that they smiled at you today. Thank that person that put you, helped you put your grocery bag in the car. Thank your husband, your, your spouse, your children for just waking up and loving you unconditionally every day. Because, <laughs> you know, sometimes we can be a mess. But anyway, that's all I got for you. I'll be back again tomorrow at 10 a.m. God willing, until next time, make it a great day. Bye, y'all. You've been listening to Good Morning Gwinnett. Make sure to tune in Monday through Thursday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time to find out what's happening around Gwinnett. If you like this episode, subscribe now and share with your friends. To learn more about Noise Media Network, visit noisemedia.us.